Let's talk all about niches. What is a niche? A niche is a species habitat, how it interacts with abiotic and biotic factors, how it gets its food, how it reproduces. Basically, a niche is a species ecological role in nature. It is its way of life. A niche is something that a species retains from its ancestors and the niche evolves over time. We know this because we see that similar species have similar niches, and this is because they diverged from a common ancestor that had a certain niche. This idea that a species that diverged from a common ancestor has a niche that resembles the niche of their common ancestor is called phylogenetic niche conservatism. There are two key types of niches, the fundamental niche and the realized niche. The fundamental niche is all the possible resources that a species can occupy or utilize. So it is all the habitats that a species can occupy, it's all the foods that it can eat, or all the climates that it can live in. But oftentimes, a species cannot actually use its entire potential fundamental niche. It's limited to a realized niche because it is competing with other organisms as well. So the realized niche is the actual resources that a species utilizes. It is a subset of the fundamental niche. So the realized niche is the actual habitat the species lives in, the actual foods that it eats, and the actual climate that it survives in. Let's take a look at this graph that compares the fundamental and the realized niche. On the x-axis, we see resource use, which is measured in the size of the seed being eaten. So towards the left of the x-axis, we would expect to see small seed size. On the extreme right, we would see large seed sizes. And somewhere in between, we might see medium seed sizes. On the y-axis, we see the number of individuals that occupy a certain seed size. So let's suppose that this peak represented species A, whereas this peak over here represented species B. So this entire peak is the fundamental niche of species A. It is the entire range of seed sizes that the species can eat. So it can eat from small seeds to about medium si seed sizes. Species B, on the other hand, seems to have a larger fundamental niche because it can occupy seed sizes that go to the extreme of small seeds to large seeds. Notice how the graph shows us that there is a region of overlap between species A and species B. So both species can eat medium-sized seeds. So in this region of overlap, the species are going to compete. But in order to reduce competition, the species are going to separate their niches. For example, species A might occupy this range of resources. Similarly, species B might occupy this range of seed sizes. Or maybe species A will occupy this range and species B will be able to occupy its entire fundamental niche. Either way, notice how the species are going to try to reduce the overlap in niche by partitioning their resources. Let's take a look at another graph. This graph shows us the fundamental niche and the realized niche of beetles. These beetles can occupy different elevations on a mountain. Species one fundamental niche is shown in blue and species two fundamental niche in orange. But notice how there's a region of overlap between those two species. 
which means both species can occupy that range of elevation in the mountain. Even though it is possible for the species to occupy that overlapping range of elevation, we notice in their realized niche that they don't occupy that range of elevation. Instead, species one occupies the left extreme of its fundamental niche, and species two occupies the right extreme. They are trying to reduce the competition by not utilizing the same overlapping resources. Let's now take a look at another graph. This graph shows that the fundamental niche is this dotted line, but because of competition from species B and competition from species A, the fundamental niche is reduced to the realized niche. So the actual range of resources used is smaller than the potential range that the species can occupy. Again, the culminating point here is that the species are going to reduce competition by reducing their fundamental niche to their realized niche. And this is because the area of niche overlap has resources that are limited. So by reducing competition, the species increase their chances of survival. Now we've talked about competition, but what really is it? Competition is when individuals or groups spend their energy fighting for access to resources. This is bad because both sides are losing. They both are risking their life. Rather than spending time reproducing, these organisms are spending energy competing for food, shelter, and space. Because competition causes organisms to be less likely to survive and reproduce, natural selection selects for traits that decrease competition. There are two kinds of competition. There is intra-specific competition or inter-specific competition. Let's focus on inter-specific competition. Inter-specific competition is when two different species are competing for the same resource. The resource is often limited, so not all individuals can have a share. Interspecific competition gives rise to the idea of competitive exclusion. Competitive exclusion means that two different species that are competing for the same resource cannot coexist in the same environment. Keep in mind that food is not the only resource that organisms compete for. It can be space, habitat, or other conditions. These different resources are a part of a species niche. So if two species have identical niches, they cannot live together because one species will be more superior and a better competitor than the other species. So one species will be better at gathering the resource. But this does not always occur. In fact, two species are more likely to experience competitive exclusion if their population sizes are really large, because that means that organisms of each species will be interacting and bumping into each other, and they are depleting resources. So competition is density dependent. That means that the more organisms, the more competition. Competitive exclusion can result in three phenomenons, extinction, a species fundamental niche becoming a smaller realized niche, or resource partitioning. Resource partitioning is when similar species that have identical niches evolve or diverge by natural selection to divide their resources so that they can decrease competition with each other. If they occupy distinct niches, then the resources that they use do not overlap, so there is less competition. Let's look at some examples. 
In this example, we're looking at blue paramecium and pink paramecium. When they are grown separately, there is no overlap in their niches, so they both can thrive. In the example on the right, when they're both grown together, one species uses resources more efficiently and drives the other species to extinction. In this example, the blue species is the one that's able to use resources more efficiently. Therefore, it outcompetes the pink paramecium. This shows competitive exclusion because it shows us that two species cannot coexist if they're competing for the same resource in the same environment. But one solution is resource partitioning, in which both species can be grown together in the same tube if they occupy different niches. This division of resources shows us that when there is no niche overlap, then both species can thrive. Let's look at this example. This graph shows us the different heights that birds can occupy in this tree. This kind of warbler occupies this region of the tree. However, this other warbler occupies this region. We see the same for all the other birds that occupy different regions of the tree. Notice how the species reduce their fundamental niche to their realized niche so that there is no niche overlap. This means that they specialize in a certain area or height of the tree, and this is called resource partitioning. This division of tree height reduces competition so that all the bird species can exist. This diagram shows us that the fundamental niche of these birds is the entire tree because they're birds, so they have the potential to occupy all habitats in this tree. However, in order to reduce competition, they have evolved to occupy specific elevations of the tree. The yellow bird occupies the highest elevation the red bird occupies the intermediate elevation, and the blue bird inhabits the trunk and the lower branches. And that is how they enable no niche overlap, and therefore they engage in resource partitioning to reduce competition. I hope this video helped, and if it did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and please let me know if you have any other video requests. Thank you.